In this video, we pick up our story of aerobic respiration by considering the step after glycolysis, the link reaction, and the Krebs cycle. And this video will help you with these course goals. Pause the video and check them out. Let's remember where we came from. The first step of aerobic cellular respiration is glycolysis, the breakdown of glucose, which gives two each of ATP, NADH, and pyruvate. While ATP is used to do work in the cell, pyruvate and NADH represent our branch point. Our last video took the branch point up towards fermentation. This video takes the other pathway towards the link reaction and the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is also referred to as the citric acid cycle. The scientists that worked out a lot of the reactions in the Krebs cycle had the last name of Krebs, but science is trying to get away from having things named after people, so the citric acid cycle is more popular today. Citric acid is the product of the first reaction of the Krebs cycle, and that's how it's called citric acid cycle. But regardless of what you call it, the goal of the Krebs cycle reactions is to generate high energy compounds. These high energy compounds are ATP, NADH, and a related, related molecule called FADH2. Together, the link reaction and Krebs cycle consist of 11 chemical reactions, all enzyme catalyzed. All of the carbon pieces, which were in the form of pyruvate, are completely oxidized and broken into one carbon pieces of carbon dioxide. Both the link reaction and Krebs cycle take place in the mitochondrial matrix of eukaryotes or in the cytoplasm and specialized membrane regions of prokaryotes. Overall, the link reaction and Krebs cycle make two ATPs, eight NADHs, and two FADH2s. To understand the cell localization of these reactions, it's important to zoom in on mitochondria and look at mitochondrial anatomy. We saw in our cell unit how mitochondria have a double membrane. The double membrane creates some unique compartments and structures inside the mitochondria. The membranes are named the outer mitochondrial membrane, shown here in brown, and the inner mitochondrial membrane, shown here as this folded cream color structure. The space in between the two membranes is called the intermembrane space, right in here. Hopefully, you can look at that inter prefix and figure that one out. The space way inside that looks like it's kind of filled with water on this diagram is called the mitochondrial matrix. The mitochondrial matrix is the site of the reactions of the link reactions and the Krebs cycle. You can see that the inner mitochondrial membrane is really, really folded, and these folds have special names called the cristae. Enzymes and proteins that help with the electron transport chain are embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane, so having these folds creates a lot more surface area or membrane space where more proteins can be inserted, and this increases the efficiency of mitochondria in the process of aerobic cell respiration. While we're on the topic, it's also interesting to remember that mitochondria have their own DNA and their own ribosomes. The DNA in mitochondria has the genes used for making the cell respiration enzymes, and the ribosomes translate the RNA made by that DNA into proteins. This electron micrograph or electron picture right here shows you what mitochondria look like in real life. Let's start with the link reaction. The link reaction gets its name because the link reaction links glycolysis to the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle requires an input of um, a chemical called acetyl-CoA, which you can see the structure of right here. Acetyl-CoA is a structure with two carbons. So the goal of the three reactions in the link reactions is to make acetyl-CoA. Along the way, two NADHs are also made. If we do a little carbon math here, that may help things. Our carbon inputs are the two three-carbon pyruvates from glycolysis. 
but the goal is to make acetyl-CoA, which only has two carbons. So, for each three-carbon pyruvates, turning it into a two-carbon acetyl-CoA requires that one carbon is chopped off. And here's that extra carbon right here. The one-carbon pieces are carbon dioxide. Take a look at the reaction. Two pyruvates react to give two acetyl-CoA's, two carbon dioxides, plus two NADH's. The pyruvates came from glycolysis. The NADH's will carry high-energy electrons to the electron transport chain. The acetyl-CoA will go on to the Krebs cycle, and carbon dioxide is a waste product that will diffuse out of the cell. Once the cell has acetyl-CoA, the cell's ready to rock and roll with the Krebs cycle. I'm not sure why, but looking at this cycle always makes me think of a dryer, with carbon pieces tumbling around and kicking out ATP, NADH, FADH2, and carbon dioxide. Let's take a closer look at the process. Remember, you don't need to know each reaction or the intermediates, but it's helpful to break the Krebs cycle into themes. Our first theme is carbon. You can see acetyl-CoA coming in the top as a two-carbon piece. Right away, the two-carbon piece is joined to a four-carbon piece called oxaloacetate to make a six-carbon piece. The next two reactions, right here and right here, each take a carbon off of that six-carbon piece. Those two carbons come off as carbon dioxide. Once the six carbon piece is turned into a, a four carbon piece, the atoms of that four carbon piece are shuffled around so that they can accept another acetyl-CoA and keep this cycle going. Since two acetyl-CoA molecules come from each glucose, this cycle goes around twice to accommodate each glucose, giving a total of four carbon dioxides getting kicked off per glucose that we started with. Another important theme to keep track of are high-energy products like NADH and FADH2. We've met NADH before in glycolysis and the link reactions. The role of NADH is to carry high-energy electrons that are stripped from glucose pieces to the electron transport chain. The role of FADH2 is the same. If we look at those two products, we can see that each acetyl-CoA that comes in generates three NADH, one, two, three, and one FADH2. With two acetyl-CoA's coming in per glucose, that doubles everything, giving us a total of six NADH and two FADH2's per glucose. With all of this electron shuffling, that means that there's a ton of redox reactions in the Krebs cycle. Remember, NADA and FAD both steal electrons from pieces of glucose. So NAD and FAD are reduced, while the glucose pieces, like acetyl-CoA, are oxidized. The last theme that we want to keep track of is ATP. The Krebs cycle generates one ATP per turn. Since there are two turns of the Krebs cycle per glucose, this makes two ATPs per glucose. Well, let's take a minute to catch our breath with the really important things to remember. What are the overall reactions? Where do the reactants come from? Where do the products go? And where are these processes happening in the cell? Here are the overall reactions for all of the processes so far. We talked about glycolysis before, so let's jump right to the link reaction. The pyruvate reactants came from glycolysis. The acetyl-CoA products will go on to the Krebs cycle. The NADH products will carry high-energy electrons to the electron transport chain, and the carbon dioxide waste products will diffuse out of the cell. In the Krebs cycle, two acetyl-CoA molecules react to give six NADHs, two FADH2s, two ATPs, and four carbon dioxides. The acetyl-CoA reactants came right from the link reaction, the ATP products will be used to do cell work. NADH and FADH2 will go on to the electron transport chain 
and these four carbon dioxides are wastes that will diffuse out of the cell. Both the link reactions and Krebs cycle reactions take place in the mitochondrial matrix. What's a bit weird at this point is even though the link reactions and the Krebs cycle are both considered aerobic processes that require oxygen, we haven't seen oxygen yet in any of these reactions. But don't worry, oxygen is coming. Oxygen is needed later for the electron transport chain to help oxidize or take the electrons from NADH and FADH2. In other words, oxygen is needed later to convert those high-energy electrons into high-energy ATP. Let's recap. The link reactions in Krebs cycle are steps in aerobic cellular respiration after glycolysis. Mitochondria has specialized membranes and compartments to increase the efficiency of cell respiration, especially the electron transport chain. The link reaction the goal is to create two acetyl-CoA's for the Krebs cycle, along with two NADH's that can be used in the electron transport chain. The Krebs cycle completely oxidizes that acetyl-CoA to make two ATP's, six NADH's, and two FADH2's. The reason why NADH and FADH2 are important products is because they carry high-energy electrons to the electron transport chain. 